Psalm 1071, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. We've got all the proclamations of presidents and leaders, but the greatest proclamation comes from the word of God, and that is give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful things happening around here. Oh, my, my, my. Great worship. I don't know. That song just kind of makes me feel taller, the great I am. And I don't mean it like I'm great. I'm just talking about when we sing that. I mean, I was singing it. I was singing so hard. I thought, I'm going to lose my voice. I just, I just wanted to sing it louder and louder. He is the great I am. Amen? Man, that song just, wow. It did it for me. Maybe not for you, but it sure did it for me today. Thank God. He is good. Some of you may wonder where my wife is today. She's usually sitting right there, and I miss her. But she is speaking at a church in Romeo, Michigan uh, this morning, probably finishing up here pretty soon. If they gave her till uh, 1156, she will be done at 1156 because that's how my wife rolls all right but anyway she's doing that uh harvest fellowship a friend of ours in fact uh, ron Rossiti, he's the pastor of that church he was our youth pastor i mean just decades ago uh, 30 years ago in fact he was our first youth pastor he's pastored different churches around the country and and now he's in romeo for the last many years so she is speaking there let me give you a little background on, on what you see around here. Back in August, uh, you know, we had this meeting, and let me tell you, this meeting that we have in July or August, this year was August, a little bit later than, than usual, it, it's an annoying meeting. I, I'm just telling you, it is annoying. When I see it on my calendar, you know, Christmas in July, I, I'm sorry, you might like Christmas and all that, but in July, I don't even want to think about Christmas. You know, so we had this meeting Christmas in August, and we came into, into our, our 313 room down the hall. And, and we sat around, we talked, and, and the question was, what do we want to see for Christmas at Grace this year? And there were different ideas. I just sat and listened. Uh, a couple of people said, hey, let's, let's just, you know, remember last year, Christmas at the movies at Grace? I mean, was that stunning or what? I was just so beautiful. And, and a couple of people said, well, let's be a little more subdued this year. Let's uh, maybe a little less, uh, a little less flashy, maybe, maybe just kind of take a break and maybe the next year even do more. But, but let's, let's just kind of take it easy this year. I let them all talk. And then I said, time out. Your pastor wants to talk. And they said, what's that? And they knew what I was going to say. I said, here's the deal. You can decorate any way you want. But when you walk in that door, I want this building to scream Christmas. So if your subdued ideas don't scream Christmas, throw them out. So how many of you know Heidi Rickard? Heidi Rickard. Hey, listen, on on Spotify, uh, what are all the different? uh, Pandora, Spotify, what's the other one? Apple Music, there, there's a couple others. She's got an album out. It has become my favorite Christmas album ever. I've got it on like continuous play. We play a lot of the songs in the lobby. It's called Peppermint Rendezvous. Now, if you don't know Heidi, this whole decoration theme, everything came out of her head. So you can only imagine what Peppermint Rendezvous, that album is like. So anyway, Heidi's down in Florida. Her husband's on an assignment down there, so she went down to be with him for Thanksgiving. But I just gotta say, man, it is so over the top around here. It is so over the top. And I, you know, when you see Heidi, make sure and thank her. Because you know what? This building screams Christmas. Next week, you'll see it all in motion. You'll be able to take pictures in the snow globe. You'll, we'll have the snow machine going out there. I mean, just all kinds of crazy stuff. You don't want to miss it, okay? So if you sat home, 
you know, wanted to visit Pastor Pillow today, be here next, next week, okay? You'll enjoy it. But make sure and take one of these home, okay? They're probably on your seat. It tells you all the different events. And uh, take two of them. Invite somebody, okay? Praise God. Y'all glad you're here? Y'all glad you're here? I got to tell you, 9 o'clock was even noisier. I, I, I would take that as a challenge. I would take that as a challenge if I were you. <clears throat> so here, here we go. You know, it's obviously all about Christmas right now. But I got to say, I think we need to let this service speak to us uh, about, about one of the favorite holidays of mine and maybe of yours, and that is Thanksgiving. Come on, amen. I understand everything's screaming Christmas, but let's not forget Thanksgiving. Uh, I, I, I think sometimes we race through the holidays so fast. In fact, if you'll put up that other slide, I want to make sure we don't forget. Yeah, so there we go. So, so you're going to see my friendly little turkey showing up a lot in some of these slides uh, because I don't want to forget Thanksgiving. Everything looks like Christmas, but I don't want, I don't want to forget Thanksgiving. How many of you love Thanksgiving? I, I love it because it's not, it's not filled with all the trappings. You know, I, I get it. Christmas has its purpose and all that and, and giving. It's all about giving, and I, I get that. But I just love Thanksgiving because it's about getting together with people you love, getting together with friends. I mean, you wake up in the morning on, on Thanksgiving Day, and I don't know what it was like where you grew up, but I'll tell you what, when we get over to Grandpa and Grandma's house, I mean, the smells. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Even though, even though we didn't host Thanksgiving usually at my house where I grew up, we go to grab, but my mom still cooked stuff. You know, she made the green bean casserole. She made the, uh, the, the uh, candied sweet potatoes, you know, with the melted marshmallows on top. You haven't lived unless you've had those. Come on, am I right? They're, they're, just, they're just amazing. And the smells they bring in the house. Now, listen, if you don't eat traditional Thanksgiving, Go buy a candle. You know, go buy a gingerbread candle or, a, you know, something to make your house smell really good, okay? Because it's just so good. I like watching the parades. I, I just enjoy what Thanksgiving's about. Come on, amen? amen. I, I, before, we get into, before we get into the scriptures for today and, and get into the real message of today, I, I want to share with you some of the proclamations. The proclamations that were made many, many years ago and, 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 and that really uh, set in motion what we celebrate this Thursday as a national holiday, Thanksgiving Day. Uh, the first national pro proclamation of Thanksgiving was June 29th, 1676. And, 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 and part of it said this, that it is a day of solemn Thanksgiving and praise, listen to this, and praise to God for such his goodness and his favor. And, and then the second proclamation, actually made by George Washington, 1789. He said this, in part of the proclamation, it said this, it is a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to observe and acknowledge with grateful hearts the many favors of Almighty God. And then the third proclamation, the one that we still recognize today, was made by Abraham Lincoln in 1863. And, and it said this, part of it said this. I can't read the whole thing, obviously, it's pretty long. But in the context of this proclamation, he said this. No human counsel has devised, nor has any mortal hand worked out these great things our God has given us. They are the gracious gifts of the Most High God, who, while dealing with us in anger for our sins, has nevertheless remembered mercy. I do therefore invite my many fellow citizens in every part of the United States, and those who are at sea, and those who are sojourning in foreign lands, to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent God, 
our Father who dwells in the heavens. So for those that are still stuck in the idea and you believed the media and much of our educational system now that has eliminated God from our history, from our foundation. I'm telling you right now, from the very foundation of this country, it was established on the goodness of God and the declaration of that goodness and the declaration of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. From day one, that's why this nation was established. Come on, amen. <clears throat> and there are many things. There are many things we can thank God for, but I thank God that this is still one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Amen? I, I want to read another verse, uh, another, another reading for you out of, out of Psalm chapter 100, and then we're going to pray in, in just a moment. It, it says this, it says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Now you may have been sitting next to someone, standing next to somebody during worship, and you might want to turn to them right about now and say, that was you. You were making a joyful noise, man. It was, it was a joyful noise. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You don't have to be able to sing good as long as it's joyful, right? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. He has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and bless his name. For the Lord is good. Everybody say, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Come on, amen. So we have a proclamation uh, from the 1600s. We have one from George Washington in the 1700s. We have one from Abraham Lincoln in the 1800s. But there is this one that we see from the author. It was King David, and he wrapped it up in this. In Psalm 107, he said, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his faithful love endures forever. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Come on, let's stand together. Let me tell you something, as a believer, how many believers we got in the house today? Oh, one more time. How many believers we got in the house today? If you're a believer, your Thanksgiving is not wrapped up in a day. It is not defined in a day. It is defined in a lifestyle. We live lives of Thanksgiving. Amen? Come on, amen? We may specially do it this Thursday, but I'll tell you what, I do it today. And I do it tomorrow. And I do it when I wake up and I do it when I go to bed and I do it when things are good and when things are bad, when I'm happy and when I'm sad. I am creating a lifestyle of thanksgiving and that's what a believer does, amen? Amen, let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord God, that you are God. You are so good, you're amazing. I thank you for what you've already spoken in this service. I thank you for how good you are. I thank you, Father God. Uh, there are people that have had a difficult time sleeping and, 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 and maybe going to sleep or staying asleep. Uh, Father, as was mentioned during that transition, Lord, uh, there is something supernatural you're about to do in their lives today as they listen to this word. I believe, Lord God, you're going to do something supernatural in every, every one of our lives. Father, as you speak to us, speak to me, God. Speak to me, God. Holy Spirit, speak to me. I thank you for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. So, so this, this may sound initially a little off topic, but it's not. Trust me. I, I want to ask you a question, and maybe it's something some of you have thought of before. I'll bet you many of you have. If you were a superhero, how many of you had that thought? So I grew, I grew up acting like I was Batman, okay? My best friend across the street and I, we dressed up. He was Robin, I was Batman. 
He still, when I see him today, he goes, hey, you remember when I was Batman, you were Robin? Sorry, you got it wrong. I was Batman. All right? I still got the album. I do. I still got the Batman album. Anyway, what, what superhero would you be? And what superpower would you have? You know, I've thought about that before, and I've thought, ah, maybe, you know, that flying thing. Anybody ever wake up, you had a dream about flying? Uh, you ever do that, right? Uh, you know, so maybe it was flying, and I thought about that, and I thought, no, nah, I wouldn't want that superpower because I don't like heights. <laughs> I really don't. You know, I, I, I fly in an airplane only because I have to, and I've overcome that fear, uh, but there are so many things I will not do. You know, ask me to go up on a lift, the, the big old lift they have here, it's never going to happen. Never. I don't care if every light bulb goes out in this place. I, I'm not going up to change them. It's not going to happen. So flying, or, or what about being able to climb up the outside of buildings, you know, got sticky hands. You, no, still same thing. I don't, I don't want to do that either. What about, uh, you know, shooting spider webs from my, from my wrist, right? You know, I don't know. That's kind of weird. But what super, what super power would you, would you have? Maybe be able to see through walls or maybe be able to, I don't know, read minds, kind of weird stuff like that. And I know some of the new superheroes, you know, uh, what, what's that guy? He turns into, he's like this big rock. What, what, what is that guy? He's called Thing? Oh, that's creative. <laughs> I'm not up on my superheroes right now. He's, his name is Thing? What a dumb name for a superhero. Man, oh man. But anyway, maybe, maybe that's your thing. Maybe that's your thing. But I want to read something to you from the writings of Paul. And, and it'll make sense in a moment. Trust me, it really will. I, I want to begin here in Philippians chapter 1. And I'm starting here because here's what I, th I think you need. Every one of us need to, we need to grasp the context of this letter. We need to grasp the context of, of, of what he's writing and where he's writing from. So it begins in, in verse 11, or verse 12, these, these words. He says, and I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped me to spread the good news. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chains because of Christ. The context of this letter, he is writing from prison. I, I don't know if that astounds you. I, it, I don't know that I'd be able to write anything encouraging if I was sitting. How many have ever been in prison? Vis, visiting. I, I understand visiting, right? Just visiting. Because I've, I've been in jail. I've been in prison to visit. All right, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Don't want to go there. And, and you know what? They are not nice places. They are just not nice places. Uh, they're very depressing, very little light. You know, man, oh man, I've done prison ministry. I've, I've gone in, done Bible studies with prisoners. First time I ever did that, they put me in this room. I had about 35, 40 guys in there and, and, and me. And I'm just thinking, these are all prisoners. I have no idea what these people did. And there's nobody in here with me. I mean, I, I, I don't want to be a hostage. You know, I mean, my mind's going in all kinds of ways. But it turned out to be a real good thing. It was a wonderful bunch of people. And, man, they listened to the gospel. It was a great time. Uh, but they're not nice places. If you think those are not nice places, you ought to see what Paul would have been in. You, you ought to see what people in that day would have been in. I mean, they were like uh, dingy caves, sometimes hewn out of a rock floor, dropped down in the middle, uh, very little, if any, light. They were damp. They were dark. They were, they were dingy. They were terrible places to be put. And, and here's Paul. He's writing this letter from that kind of a situation. And listen to what he goes on and, and, and says. Listen, some of us would have a hard time writing a really kind, encouraging letter because we just had a flat tire. You, you understand? Because that, that's the epitome of, of persecution for us. That's the epitome of a problem for us. And I'm not making light of that. But I look at what Paul's going through and look at what he writes. Beginning, going further in, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 8. Listen to what he says. He says, rejoice in the Lord. How often? Always. 
Again, I say rejoice. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, remember he's writing from prison, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Let, let's sum this up. Let's sum this up. He says, rejoice always. He says, don't let anything give you anxiety. Instead, pray about every situation you face and be thankful. Amen. I mean, that, that's a pretty tall order. I don't know about you, but I look back over the last few years, and I've talked about it a lot over the last few years. It was not a fun time. You know, going through COVID and going through financial uh, downturn. I, I read somebody's post uh, just this morning on Facebook. They said, this was not fun. I went to the grocery store. I, I spent, I don't know how much it was to fill her car. It was like $100 to fill her car. And, and it was $500 for groceries for the family. She goes, this is not fun. I, I get that. Uh, but, but here's the thing. He, he says, rejoice always. Don't let anything give you anxiety. Uh, pray about every situation and be thankful. That is a tall order for every single one of us, isn't it? Come on, amen? But when we do that, he said the result will be the peace of God. So I don't have any peace. Well, this is one of those if-then verses, isn't it? This is one of those if-then if, if verses. If you do these things... Come on, be anxious for nothing. And then he, then he goes on, he tells you how to get to control of yourself. Philippians chapter 4, continuing on, he says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, noble, just, pure, whatever things are lovely, of a good report, if there's anything virtuous, anything praiseworthy, you've got to meditate on those things. i, I got to tell you, that's not easy. It's not easy when everything's falling apart around you to think about things that are good, that are noble, that are praiseworthy, come on, uh, uh, that, that, are, that are true, that are, that are pure, that are of a good report. It, it's not easy to change your thinking. Amen? There are times, I still do it. I just did it a, a few days ago. There are times, you know, I've got my phone, uh, you know, on a magnetic holder. It's sitting right next to my bed. And there are times I, I put it on a, 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 a scripture reading message, maybe about healing or maybe about overcoming, or, and I'm going to sleep with that on. You know what? It's feeding my conscience. It's feeding my subconscious. It's feeding my thoughts even while I'm sleeping. Listen, God says that he will speak to you even in the night seasons. Why, why would I waste a few hours? Why would I waste five or six hours? I'm sleeping more. I, I've been sleeping six, seven hours a night. Hallelujah, I'm getting a breakthrough. But why, why waste that time? Feed your, feed your spirit. Come on, amen? I, I got to tell you, it works. You know, come on, it works. So if you don't like what you're thinking, you got to change your stinking thinking. Come on, Amen? Amen? So, so he, he doesn't stop there, though. Let's continue on Philippians chapter 4, verse 10. Now I praise the Lord. Listen to this. Here it comes. Now I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. Here's a guy in prison. He says, I've learned to be content. How in the world can you be content when you're in prison for doing something that God has told you to do. I mean, that, I don't know about you, but that's the epitome of, of struggle to me. I'm doing, God, I'm doing what you told me to do and everything's falling apart. He says, I have learned in any situation I am in to be content. But he goes on, he says, with whatever I have, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. Here's the superpower, everybody. Everybody's got it. Everybody's got it. He says, for I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Come on. That, my friend, is your superpower. 
When was the last time you thought about that verse? Maybe you never heard it before. But I'll tell you what, now you've heard it. When was the last time? Those of you that know that verse, when was the last time? You're looking at all the struggle and the financial and the physical and the relational and all this stuff maybe falling apart around you. You go, I can't do this. And then you're reminded, wait a minute, I got a superpower. I can do all things through Christ because he is the one that I get my strength from. Come on, amen. I have the superpower of strength through Christ. Amen? Amen? Amen. You say, well, I I still don't know how that's relevant to Thanksgiving. Because there are some of you that have gone through some unbelievably difficult stuff in the last year or so. I won't ask for a show of hands. But there are some of you, you've gone through some incredibly difficult things. There are some of you that are going through some incredibly difficult things right now. I know that's true. I know that's true. I've gotten your emails. I, I've prayed with you sometimes through email, sometimes through instant messaging, sometimes out in the lobby. I mean, I, I know some of you are going through some really difficult times right now. And, and you know what? I don't want to prophesy over your life. I don't want to prophesy over your life, but I'm telling you right now, there are some of you that 2025 is going to be unbelievably difficult. So, well, thanks a lot, Pastor. Glad I came. But but here's the thing. Jesus said in this world you're going to have tribulation. So if you're not in tribulation right now, guess what? 2025 might be the year you tribulate. I didn't make the promise. Jesus did. In this world, you're going to have tribulation. But I'm telling you right now, whatsoever things are pure, lovely, of a good report, if there's anything virtuous, anything praiseworthy, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. He will give you the strength to live through 2025 and beyond. He'll give you strength to get through the rest of this year. He'll give you strength to overcome what's happened in the past. Come on. He is that kind of a God. He's given you a superpower to get through whatever you're going through. Amen. Psalm 107.1, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. We've got all the proclamations of presidents and leaders, but the greatest proclamation comes from the word of God, and that is give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Amen. Yeah, but, but you don't know what I'm going through. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Yeah, but you don't know. You don't know the diagnosis I got. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Listen, the word doesn't change because your circumstance changes. As believers, we have to live like we believe the word of God. Amen? Amen? We've, we've, we have a covenant with God cut in the blood of Jesus Christ that we'll celebrate in a few moments. We, we have a covenant with God. And, and it says that he paid it all for us. Come on, amen. And if he paid it all, I need not pay it. Praise God. He'll bring me through. Come on, amen. So, so let me give you three things. I've only got a few more minutes. We've got to do communion But let me give you three things that are going to help you stay thankful during this season and every season. Amen? Amen. Come on, turn, smile at your neighbor and say, this is for you now. Come on, tell them, this is for you now. Oh, some of you didn't do it. I know some of you didn't do it. It'd be noisier in here if you did it. I only did this to let my ushers know every now and then I actually drink from this cup. Thank you so much. (laughs) It's awesome. Okay, so let me give you three things to do that will help you stay thankful during this season and every season. Number one, you got to keep a healthy perspective. Uh, Okay, stay with me here. you got to keep a healthy perspective. What, What in the world do I mean by that? Uh, can, I, can I just throw some things out that, that might shock you a little bit? If you made $20,000 this year, and some of you go, wow, that'd be a lot of money. I get that. Some of you didn't make that. 
but some of you made more than that. If you made $20,000 this year, you are wealthier than 80% of the people that live on this planet. 80%. You say, well, yeah, cost of living. I understand. Uh, there's some relativity in there. I get it. But, but sometimes we don't have the perspective that we need when we look at the rest of the world. You are wealthy compared to world standards. Maybe not your neighbor's standards. Maybe, maybe not in these United States. I understand that. But compared to the world, again, it's about perspective. Come on, it's about perspective. I said this one time years ago, and I got in trouble for it because somebody was here that they took great offense with it. And I'll, I'll just say it, and you know, if you're offended by it, talk to Zach after. <laughs> it's all his fault. Uh, but I said this, I said, I, I, met, I met a man, or I, I knew a man who had no uh, shoes. Uh, or I met a man who knew no shoes, and he was sad until he met a man who had no feet. Uh, you understand? I mean, having no shoes, it's not, a, it's not a funny thing. But I'll tell you what, perspective helps us. It, it's not like, well, at least I'm doing better than they are. That, that's not the point. It's just like, no matter how bad your life is, it, it could be worse. It, it could be worse. And it's important to keep perspective. Listen to some of these other things. Uh, up to half of the world's population has nothing, uh, nothing to cook on. You know, wait a minute, I got, I, got, I got two ovens in my house. I got all kinds of ways to cook. Uh, half of the population has nothing to cook on. 10% of the population has still never had electricity. You know, we get upset because our electricity goes out. 10% of the population never had it. More people have mobile phones than have toilets. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. How many think Bill Gates ought to spend some of his money uh, putting toilets around the world instead of vaccinations? Let's, let's vote on that right now, all right? <laughs> Say, hey, take some of those vaccinations and put them down that toilet, all right? Anyway, that's a long story. You don't know what I'm talking about. That's okay. Be, you know, sometimes ignorance is bliss. But anyway, uh, you understand? Uh, Thank God. I'm made glad for indoor plumbing. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Amen. He's the great I am. Got a toilet in my house. Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody said this. I said, uh, they said, the life you complain about is the very life someone else is praying for. <laughs> Perspective. Perspective. Uh, this, this next illustration, just on perspective, it, uh, you know, it hits home. I got all these rose bushes down, down around my patio, uh, and, and they're, they're just nasty bushes. <laughs> Amen. They're nasty bushes. <laughs> Didn't mean to wake that kid up. But they are. They're nasty bushes. Uh, they produce beautiful flowers uh, kind of mid-spring, and then uh, every once in a while you get a flower here and there. But they are just the pickeriest, thorniest, nastiest bushes. It's got the sharpest thorns of, of any bush I've ever touched. I mean, they're like, I, I have to wear big leather gloves to trim them. And here's the thing, I trim them, listen to this, once spring comes, I trim them every single Monday. I got to go out with trimming shears, because all of a sudden, from one Monday to the next, there will be all these shooters that come out like this long, this high above the bush. They're just, pew, pew, pew. I mean, it's just like, what the, you're just, you're not of this world. What are you doing? And I have to trim them, and I get poked, and I get picked. And I hate these bushes. I ought to tear them out, you know? They're just nasty bushes. Some will complain that a rose bush has thorns, but some will see a thorny bush that produces roses. You see, it's just perspective, isn't it? It's just, I still hate them, but it's, 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 it, is a matter of, it is a matter of perspective. Listen to what it says, First Thessalonians chapter 5. It says, always be joyful. How often? Always. How often? Always. always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you. He belonged to Christ. 
Here's, here's what the Spirit of God spoke to me last night. I was writing some notes. Maybe if we change the way we look at things, the things we look at will change. Just a thought. I'll say it again. Maybe if we change the way we look at things, the things we are looking at will change. Here, here's why we need to be thankful in all situations. Number one, it takes focus from what the enemy may be doing in our life, and we put our focus back on what God is doing and wants to do. Come on, amen? Uh, uh, listen, when I praise God in the midst of anything that's going on, uh, my son mentioned this verse during the transition, Romans 8, 28. But we know that what? All things. Everybody say all things. All things, all things work together for good. You don't know what I'm going through. There's nothing good can come out. I want to tell you something. Some of the most horrific situations that I've lived through, on the other side, God took that lump of coal and he pressed it and he shaped it and he took time and it came out a diamond in my life and I'm a better man because of that. I'm a better pastor because of that. I pray I'm a better dad because of that. Come on, amen. I'm a better husband because of that. I've got a better outlook because of that. All things work together for good. So, so listen, if it doesn't look good yet, God's not done yet. Amen? So we give him praise. We give him praise. Amen. I got I to gotta move on. Number two. Did I read just the scripture? Oh, can't move on from that. Number two, reflect often. Everybody say reflect often. How many times, how many times before you even knew there was a problem, you found out God already had a solution? Uh, no, think about that. Think about that. I'll never forget one time we were living in Tulsa and my wife's coming home from a, a, a prayer thing and, and all of a sudden I stopped what I was doing because I was studying for a, for a test or something at school and I stopped what I was doing, and I was overwhelmed with the need to pray, and I knew I was to pray in the Spirit. I just began to pray in the Spirit, almost like I was warring for something. I, I didn't even know what I was doing, really. I was just praying fervently in the Spirit in other tongues. And, and my wife got home, oh, 10 minutes later, and she goes, hey, listen, uh, the weirdest thing just happened. Two-lane road, 81st Street through Tulsa. She's coming down the street, comes up over a hill, and there's a gigantic like refrigerator box, and it's dark. It's nighttime. This box is sitting right in the middle of her lane. And, and she's like, oh, she come over a hill. She doesn't have time to think. She swerved into oncoming lane, and there was no cars. And she swerved back, and then it dawned on her what she had just done. Now, do you think there's a relation to the urge to pray? God had a solution before my wife even knew she had a problem. Come on, amen. And I think sometimes we need to reflect on the goodness of God when we didn't even know he was there. We didn't even know he cared. We didn't even know he was at work. Come on, amen. I many of you know it's a real common thing to have a list of things we pray for. How many of you have created a list of things you're thankful for? Yeah. I, I, I just think we ought to do that. You know, when I first got saved, Joy and I, man, I, I went through months sometimes with no paycheck. I know what it's like to live without. I know what it's like to have no idea how we're going to pay our bills. I, I know what it's like to make $4.65 an hour, and I've got a $300 apartment payment and a $165 car payment, all these things going on, and, and a baby that's going to be born. I know what that's like, so don't, don't look at me like, well, you have no idea what I'm going through. Don't tell me that. I've been there. And I've also been there when I, I realized our kids needed some clothing, and we didn't have any money, and I sat down with our budget, and I looked, and I did all the subtraction of all the bills from the money that was in the bank, and, and, and there wasn't that much, and all of a sudden I look, and there's $108 left over. After the bills are all paid, and I called my wife, I said, Joy, come here, you got to see this. I said, there's $108 left over at the end of this month. She goes, wow. I said, what do you want to do? I said, let's go shopping. <laughs> well, I did. Our kids needed some, some things. So we go to Oakland Mall, and we're walking around, and we prayed, and we said, God, show us some deals. We came home with a bag full of clothes and stuff that our kids needed, 
And I just, right then, and this is, this is like, you know, 40 years ago. I sat down and I've got a file. It's still in my house, still in my file cabinet. It's called Blessings from God. And I began to make a list. Here's what the price tag said. This one, and this one, and this one, and this one. This is what it should have cost us. Here's what we paid for it. It was a fraction. And we still had money left over out of the $108 after we bought the clothes. Listen, I mean, listen, make a list. Make a list. Remember what he has done. Reflect often. Reflect on what he has done for you. It's so easy to look at what he hasn't done. Never develop your theology about God from what he hasn't done. Develop your theology about God from what he has done and from his word. Amen? Amen. Psalm 34, verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Magnify. Magnify. Make him bigger than your problems. When you rejoice, when you're thankful, you are making God bigger than the problems around you. Come on, amen. Spend time doing that. Complaining diminishes God. Exalting him makes him larger than anything you face. Number three, decide again every day. Remember, this is a lifestyle, people. This is not summed up in one day, this Thursday. Come on. This is, I mean, when you get up tomorrow, oh, Monday blues. I, I never have the Monday blues. You know why? Because I have Monday off. Hallelujah. <laughs> but you know what? I work hard on Friday. I work hard on Saturday. I work pretty hard on Sunday. Uh, but you know what? Don't, don't have the Monday blues. Come on, man. Don't, don't buy into that, uh, into what the world, uh, you know, establishes for how we should feel about things. Right? Make a decision every day. I'm going to be grateful. I'm going to be thankful. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to reflect. I'm going to change my perspective about how good God is and everything. Listen, if you say, He hasn't done anything for me in ages, are you saved? If you are saved, Come on, if he never does another thing for you for the rest of your life, you are saved from the penalty of your sin. Come on, man. He's made you new from the inside, from the inside out. Come on, amen. amen. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. What does it say? I've got my pages out of order. Anyway. Where is it? Forget Philippians 4, verse 4. <laughs> Psalm 34, verse 1. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen? Amen. Well, you know, Freedom Team will be up here after church. They pray for people. I'm so blessed by that Freedom Team. Kurt and Anna, you got a great team around you. So proud of you. I love it. But can I tell you something? Don't come up here for prayer and ask God to impart thankfulness into, you, into your life. There is no impartation for thankfulness. It's a decision. It's a decision. That's like, oh God, you know, pray for me that I'll love my wife again. No, that's, that, that's a command. Pray that I love my husband. Ah, uh, no. That's a command. I'll, I'll pray for your situation. I'll, I'll pray, pray through struggles you're going through. But no, you've got to make a decision to love. You've got to make a decision to rejoice. Amen? amen? Come on, amen. So there's no impartation for this. It's got to be a decision every single day. Amen? amen? Come on, stand with me if you will. I know we're going into communion right now, and if you do not have elements... If you walked right by those doors with those baskets full of those things that you looked at and said, I wonder what that's for. Now you know. All right, so make sure you get your elements. While those of you that are going to get elements, while you're doing that, and I don't know, I don't think they're running around with baskets. So run out and get them. And we'll, we'll have some keyboard playing in just a moment. But while, while we're getting ready to receive this, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm one of those people, I look at words, 
And, and a few years ago, I looked at the word thanks. And I believe it was, a, it was an old English word. And it was originally spelled T-H-A-N-C. And, and that old English word literally meant, I will remember. Isn't that amazing? I, I think that's even better. I, 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 think, that, I think that gives some, uh, some, puts some meat on the bones of what that word really means. So when you tell somebody thank you, you're actually saying, I remember. I, I, I remember. I will remember. When you tell God thanks, it, you're, you're kind of going back and remembering all he's done for you. Amen? Jesus was our model. Go back to the story of the fishes and loaves and, you know, how he, he took the, the loaves of bread and he took the fish and one time he fed 5,000, one time he fed 7,000. He did that twice. Is that amazing to you? And it once wasn't enough. Do it again. You know, it's so cool. But here's, here's what happened. They brought him the, the, the loaves and fish and there's thousands of people. Anybody with, anybody with eyeballs could tell that's not enough to feed these thousands. What did he do? In the midst of lack, listen to me, in the midst of lack, he lifted up those loaves and fishes and he thanked God. In the midst of your lack, thank God because gratefulness is the pathway to increase. Did you hear me? Gratefulness is the pathway to increase. <laughs> Come on, amen. So, so we see the story of communion and, and the Apostle Paul, uh, listen to what he says, we'll receive in just a moment. Spirit of God revealed this to him because he said in verse 23 of chapter 11, 1 Corinthians, for I have received the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had supped, he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes. Listen very carefully to this next part. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, everybody say unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. That's serious stuff. But let a man examine himself. Let him so eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks condemnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. This cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep or die before, the, before their time. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged, judged with the world. What, what's this saying? If you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, don't do this. Don't identify with this if you're not first identified with Him. How do you do that? Hey, listen, there are people in this room. I meet you all the time. You were baptized. You were, you were dedicated, all these kind of things as a baby. You thought everything's good. I'm good. Don't need anything else. I want to tell you something. Romans chapter 10 says, if you will confess with your mouth, baby can't do that. Jesus be my Lord. I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. I, I don't want to live what's called extra Bible outside of Scripture. I, I want to live what, whatever the Bible tells me to do. So it says, confess him as Lord. If you've not said, Jesus, be Lord of my life, I believe you died for my sins. If you've not identified that way, don't identify this way. Simple as that. You say, well, how do I do that? Right where you're at, just say, Jesus, be Lord of my life. Be Lord of my life. Seriously. Acts chapter 2, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Man, God made it easy. I didn't say the life is easy. 
Because on the other side of that decision, man, you, you got some battles to fight. Trust me. But it's worth it. You may be here today and you've made Jesus Lord, but you can receive unworthy also. And we just went through this whole teaching. We talked about the, the, the different facets of how God revealed himself to us. And every one of those facets is fulfilled through the life of Jesus Christ. I identify as a believer with him because he is Jehovah Rapha to me. He's my healer. He's my provider. He's my peace. He's all of these facets of God revealed in my life. Come on, amen. amen. So if you've, not, if you've not identified with him in that way, do that. Say, I, re I, I receive you as my healer. Come on, amen. And even at that Last Supper, sitting comfortably around a table with the 12 disciples, knowing full well this was the night he was to be betrayed, knowing full well that the betrayer was sitting right there with him, knowing full well the one that was about to deny him that said, I'll never deny you, <laughs> sitting right there. He knew what crucifixion was like because he studied scripture. Isaiah 53 spoke of it. He knew what he was going to go through. And yet he took the bread and the wine. And what did he do? He gave thanks. He gave thanks. Let's do that. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for these these emblems that represent the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the body uh, that, that bore those stripes, that shed that blood. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father, that no longer by the blood of bulls and goats, but by the precious blood of the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, we thank you for these elements and what they represent to us. We are grateful people. The Bible says after he had given thanks, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, take eat. This is my body that is given for you. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. And then he took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Again, no longer the, bulls, the blood of bulls and goats, but by the precious blood of the Lamb, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. He took the cup and he, and he said, this is my cup of the new covenant. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Thank you, God. Let's show our thankfulness. Come on, express your gratefulness. You can do it loud. Come on, you can shout, you can clap. Come on, express your gratefulness, come on. Come on, give a shout to the Lord. So much he's done for us. So good. You are so good. You are so good. You are so good. You are so good, God. You are so good. I praise you, God. Oh, we praise you, God. You are so good. We rejoice in the Lord always. And in case we forgot, again, I say rejoice. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Happy Thanksgiving. God is good.
Come on, God is good. I said God is good all the time. God bless you, Travis. Come on up.